So I just wanted to start by saying something to the parents who are grieving for the loss of their adult daughter. I only knew your daughter for the briefest periods uh, at debating competitions when we were teenagers about 33 years ago. I was 17 years old and I think that she was 16 years old. And in losing that person, your daughter, you've suffered a terrible loss. And you did not deserve the frenzied politicisation of the circumstances of your daughter's death of the past week. And I have thought long and hard about the implications for you of what I feel that I need to say today. And I hope that whatever else happens from this point, that you will understand that in saying today that the things that are being claimed to have happened did not happen, that I do not mean to impose anything more upon your grief. But I hope that you will also understand that because what is being alleged did not happen, I must say so publicly. Prior to last Friday's story in the ABC, no one in law enforcement or the law or politics or the media ever put any substance of any specific allegations to me at all. I was aware over the last few months of a whispering campaign. Had the accusation ever been put to me before they were printed, I would have at least been able to say the only thing that I can say, and likely the only thing that I'm ever going to be able to say, and it's the truth, and that is that nothing in the allegations that have been printed ever happened. Even now, the only information I have about the allegations is what has been circulating online and in certain media outlets. The allegations appear to be about a period in early 1988 during an end of school debating competition at Sydney University. I was 17 years old and the other person was 16. We were both selected with two others on the Australian Schools debating team and we went to Sydney University for an international competition. It was a long time ago and I'd always remembered it as a happy time. But I can say categorically that what has been put in various forms, in allegations, simply did not happen. In this last week, I have tried to do what I've tried to do all of my life. Respect the rules and the processes and the law. I was determined to follow the process set out by the AFP Commissioner, and it's a process because of my background I know well to not comment on allegations through the media because it risks prejudicing any investigation. So I've waited until the New South Wales Police concluded their consideration of the matter. And staying silent, following the rules, is a very difficult decision. While I have followed the rules and stayed silent, I have been subject to the most wild, intense, unrestrained series of accusations that I can remember in modern Australian politics. Maybe that's the new normal. I hope for everyone's sake it's not. A very difficult part of following those rules was that my colleagues have become the target of allegations and speculation themselves. My colleagues are my friends, and I'm deeply sorry to each of them for that. But I followed the rules. I did precisely the same thing the former opposition leader did, and I waited for the police to conduct and conclude the process that they apparently had on foot. I make no criticism of the former opposition leader. I now understand what he went through. He also followed the rules, and he did the difficult thing asked of all of us by law enforcement authorities. I think a difference for the former opposition leader was that for him, while the police process was on foot, 
the entire Australian media left the issue to be dealt with by the authorities and did not start an attempt to conclude a public trial by media. There weren't any calls for him to stand down or public reporting of anonymous, unsourced, untested material designed to try someone in public while they're duty bound to remain silent. Indeed, when something similar happened to the former leader of the opposition, everyone followed the accepted process and for a very long time they did that. With me, certain outlets couldn't even give it a week without trying, possibly convicting me publicly with allegations. Perhaps another difference is that I, I've never had any kind of formal or substantive detail or any detail at all about this matter of what was actually being alleged. Nothing like that has ever actually been put to me. Up until last week, central to both our justice system and Australian journalism was that in reporting, just like in the justice system, it was always a basic foundational starting point that at the very least, for anything resembling a fair process, the accusation would need to be put to the person being accused. Before last Friday, all I can say is that I had heard think about November last year, a rumour that was being spread by a small number of people that I had somehow offended against someone decades ago in a way that was never specified to me. So, something that I am just personally struggling to even wrap my head around is that all of this has happened and I have never been contacted in any substantive form by anyone putting to me the details of what appears is now being alleged against me. No one put anything in any detail to me seeking a response. None of the senior politicians or ex-politicians that have known about these allegations and rumours have ever put them to me. No journalist has ever put the detail of the allegations to me in a way that would allow seeking a response. Not ever. All I know about the allegations is what I've read in the media. Before politics, I was a Crown Prosecutor. I worked in and believed in our justice system, and I, I still do. As a prosecutor for years, I helped victims. I prosecuted in trial and at sentence the most serious sexual assaults against women and children. That was my job before politics. I always did so trying to respect the rights of the people who were accused but I always gave everything I had to doing right by the victim in the often traumatic process of the justice system. I've given the bulk of my adult working life to public service and the law. I have given absolutely everything I have had in the tank over the last year to our government, which has been desperately trying to help the country out of the worst crisis in its modern history. If I stand down from my position as Attorney General because of an allegation about something that simply did not happen, then any person in Australia can lose their career, their job, their life's work based on nothing more than an accusation that appears in print. If that happens, anyone in public life is able to be removed simply by the printing of an allegation. Every child we raise can have their lives destroyed by online reporting of accusations alone. My guess is that if I were to resign and that set a new standard, well, there wouldn't be much need for an Attorney General anyway because there would be no rule of law left to protect in this country. So I will not be part of letting that happen while I'm Attorney General, and I'm sure that you will ask, so I will state to you I am not standing down or aside. I've discussed with the Prime Minister today that after speaking with my own doctor, I'm going to take a short period of leave to assess and hopefully improve my own mental health. All of my life, I've just pushed through, but for the many caring family and friends who've asked me that question over the course of the last week, are you okay? 
I've got to say, my answer, my honest answer is I really don't know. I'm not ashamed to say that I'm going to seek some professional assessment and assistance on answering that question over the next few weeks before I go back into the field of my duties and resume the role of Attorney General, Minister for Industrial Relations and Leader of the House. Mr. Mr. I, I'm happy to answer any Mr. questions. Mr. 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 Is your defence here that you didn't sleep with the alleged victim or that it was consensual? I did not sleep with the victim. We didn't have anything of that nature happen between so what us. what does that say then about the allegations here? Is this something which has been fabricated? I just, I can't talk to you about the allegations. I can say to you all, it didn't happen. But I, I can't criticise or, or mount a defence or cross-examine someone. I'm just not going to do that to the family of this poor woman. But these accusations have been put against you, so you have to have a defence here. So well, why do you think this has been put against you? I don't know the answer to that question. I can only say to you that it didn't happen. Uh, others will trawl over this, I am sure, in the media, and in politics. As I say, I've conducted trial after trial myself. But I can't give you that explanation. Do you know Mr. Potter, to allow, allow, to allow due process, Mr. Potter, Potter, to allow due process, should there be an independent inquiry by a retired judge, as there was in the High Court for Bass and Hayden? I mean, th these are matters for other people to judge. Would you like as to see an independent inquiry as, as, have the chance to clear your name? Well, the Dyson Hayden matter was about workplace relations accusations which were contemporaneous, required by health and safety laws. I, I, I don't know what it would achieve. Other people will be the judge of this, but it would be the first time in Australian history that a public figure or anyone effectively is put on trial in circumstances where they would be required to disprove something that didn't happen 33 years ago. And, and if, if that happened to me, all I could say is what I've said to you today, that it just didn't happen. Mr. Potter, you're not just any public figure, Mr. Potter. You're not just any public figure. You're the first law officer of the land. What of the woman who was involved in it? You talked about you remember the trip very well. It was a nice trip. What are your memories of her? Well, I, I, and what was your relationship with her? I didn't say I remember it very well. I, I remember it as a happy time. It was 33 years ago. I, I remember the person as a, an intelligent, bright, happy person. But I, I hadn't had any contact from that person at all, to the best of my recollection, in the 33 years since that time in January 1988. What, what about was that your time? contact with her then? What was your contact with her then? Well, we, there were four of us on this team. We were friends. We, we hung out together. Were was it at any time an intimate relationship, Mr. No, it wasn't. <coughs> were you ever alone, the two of you? I, look, I just I don't think so. I mean, we did what normal teenagers would do. There were groups of people. In the last 33 years, have you been in touch with anyone, whether the victim or her friends and family, about these informal allegations? Not, no one. I, I, I guess it's what I was... It's so staggering to me that this was circulating out there and no one ever raised it with me. When was the last time you had communications with the complainant? That, that week, I would think, in, in early December... Sorry, early January in 1988. And since then, have you ever asked anyone to contact her on your behalf? No. Minister, given that you say that you're innocent and that these allegations um, uh, came as a surprise to you, uh, why wouldn't you support an independent inquiry that would then clear your name? Well, I'm not... These are just for other matters, other people to determine whether or not there should be such a thing. What, what would I say in front of that inquiry? What would that inquiry ask me to do? To disprove something that didn't happen 33 years ago. Well, and I, 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 I honestly don't know what I would say you to that inquiry. Prove it. Prove it. I, of course I can't. Of course I can't. So, Mr. Porter, there is this hanging over your head. There is this question, and you're not any public figure. You're the first law officer of the land, the Attorney General. So should you not step aside so that Australians can have faith in the legal system? I think that in the statement that I've given you, I've tried as best I can to address why I think that would be the wrong course. Because it would mean in this 
hyper-politicised world that we have, that any allegation would basically mean, if it weren't resolved through a court process to some group's satisfaction, that the person has to end their life and their career. Is the the point, are you saying like, that the specific like allegations, there were very specific allegations that have been made, quite obviously, um, and you're saying that there's no truth in them at all, very detailed? It's, it's exactly what I'm saying. What, what I, all, all I have, by way of the allegations, is what I've literally read, the same things that you would have read. They just didn't happen. You say no journalist or no media organisation has put those specific allegations to you at any time? Never. You said that sexual harassment allegations made against Dyson Hayden were very concerning and incredibly serious. And as Attorney General, you asked your department to investigate the matter. Dyson Hayden also strongly denied the allegations. Do you accept that the nature of the allegations made against you, even though you deny them, are so grave and serious, especially considering your position as the first law officer of the Commonwealth? They warrant an independent investigation. Well, these, I can only say that these are decisions. Obviously, I can't make that decision because I am the subject of the allegation. But, the, dif but the difference between what occurred in the investigation of the Dyson Hayden matter is, is, I think, that they were workplace bullying or harassment allegations where there is a requirement under the relevant health and safety law to conduct an inquiry. You're talking here about a civil determination of a, of a criminal allegation on presumably the standards of balanced probabilities where I would be asked to disprove something that just didn't happen 33 years ago. I, so if, if that happens, I, I couldn't succeed to disprove something that didn't yeah, happen. Is the point yeah. out. In, in her statement, in her statement uh, to, to the lawyer, to her lawyer, the complainant uh, said that the incident in question happened on the evening of 9 January 1988 in her room at the Women's College at Sydney University during the University Debating Championships. Uh, what do you recall of the events of that night? I just, uh, first of all, I've never seen that statement. No, no one's provided it to me. I've never been asked on it before. I, that, it was a long time ago, but I can just say to you that the things that are written and said to have happened, wherever they're said to have happened, that's the first time that it's been put that they happened in someone's room, they just didn't happen. The complainant has provided a photo. She provided a photo of the two of you sitting at, at the formal dinner that night. Do you remember that dinner or sitting next to her? Oh, I'm sure there was a formal dinner that night. I'm sure, I'm sure that's the case. I mean, we, we were a group of people who were, were going out, debating during the day, going out to functions and things at night. I, I'm, I'm absolutely sure there would be such a photo. She's more specific after that. She's more specific in her, in her statement. She says that you and she and a group of others had been out for dinner. Uh, you had then gone dancing at the Hard Rock Cafe and then you walked her back to her room. Do you, do you recall that yeah, and I just, what's your recollection? That, that may well be the case. So you don't remember that? Oh, look, it is... 33 years ago, I remember two evenings that week. One was a night with, um, at one of the colleges with um, bowls of prawns, which sticks in my mind. I, I do remember a formal dinner um, and going out dancing. Sounds about right. Do you remember walking no her to her room? Though? At all? No. Mr. Porter, is there no sexual involvement of anybody on that trip? Well, I just no. <laughs> Could, could I have forgotten? Could, have could I have forgotten the things that have been printed? Could I have forgotten or misconstru misconstrued the things that I have read, which are said to have occurred? Absolutely not. Minister, they just you, didn't happen. Minister, have you ever been the subject of any other complaints of this nature? Are you aware of any other women in your past who could make similar allegations? No. To, no, no to both those have questions. You ever had anyone, uh, have you or anyone uh, on your behalf ever asked someone to sign a non-disclosure agreement? No. Mr. Mr. Porter, Porter, is this the problem? Is one of the problems here, Mr. Porter, Porter that, that your government? Sorry, I just. Sorry. Sorry. Mr. Porter, Sorry. it's one of the problems here is that the government, which you're a part of, has said that it believes victims, it believes survivors, and yet, with respect, you're standing here saying that it didn't happen. Isn't that somewhat 
in Congo is some difficulty well, out there? I just, having myself. There's a difficulty there, though, isn't there? Having myself run trial after trial after trial, like serious matters, helping victims, women and children, every absolute effort has to be made to take allegations seriously, to pursue them through the court process, and it is a arduous, gruelling process. And I did that on their behalf. But equally, the other side of that process is there's, there's rights. And, and there are circumstances where someone might absolutely believe something, but it not, might, might not be a reliable account. That is actually why we have a justice system. It's why we have courts and the presumption of innocence and burdens of proof. That, that's, that's why we do these things in that process and not like this. So her specific allegation, Mr Porter, her specific allegation in, in the statement to her lawyer was that uh, then you took her back to her room allegedly and allegedly then forced her to perform oral sex on you and then after you raped her twice. What do you say to that? I just, it didn't happen and it's not true. Do you think true. the Prime Minister's and your Cabinet colleagues are going to stick by you? I just, uh, my, my colleagues are doing, uh, I think, a very very good job in the most difficult of circumstances. But do you think they're going to personally continue to support you? Uh, you'll have to ask my Cabinet colleagues, but if this is the new standard that anyone in Cabinet resigns because there's an allegation against them, no matter how serious, if allegation equals resignation, I'm not sure that anyone in any position of authority, Cabinet, Labor or Liberal, would think that that's a standard that they want to be put to. Did they encourage you to come forward? Did they encourage you to come forward? And do you have the, the full backing of the Prime Minister? Uh, I spoke with the Prime Minister this morning, and that full backing is there. And he, I, I asked the Prime Minister for a short period of leave just so I can assess where this is at. But but. Uh, I spoke to the Prime Minister about the allegations on Wednesday, I think, of last week. And did week. he show you uh, the detailed letter that was provided to him? No, it had been sent to the AFP. Are you able to effectively do your job while these allegations are untested and your integrity is under question? Well, I'm going to take a couple of short weeks' leave just for my own sanity. I think that I will be able to return from that and do my job. Those questions, I feel in myself that I can do my job, and I'm no different from the person who was doing the job two weeks ago. Does the Attorney General need to be beyond reproach? Well, no one is beyond an allegation. No one. I mean, just can I can I just just but just if you could just imagine for just. And I know that you know we're all cynics, and this is. This is a hard and tough and fast environment that we're all... But just imagine for a second that it's not true. That for whatever reason, the recollection and the belief which I'm sure was strongly held is just not true. So just imagine that for a second. So, Mr Porter, if this was a football club or a corporation or a, or a company or even the High Court, you would stand aside while this was investigated. Would that not be better for you and but for everybody? As, as again, no one has ever informed me about what was occurring with New South Wales Police. But as I understand it, there was a complaint made at some point. The complaint was withdrawn. There was a primary investigation, if I can call it that. The additional material, which I've never seen, which some of you have put to me today for the first time, it appears has been provided to New South Wales Police They've looked at that, they've investigated, they've sought advice, they've closed the matter. They've, you going to begin your own they've, they've determined that evidence is not admissible in a court of law. We're not in a court of law at the moment, that, we're in the court of public opinion. With, with respect, that's what a police investigation is. Yes. is but, uh, but again, I, I, New South Wales Police have never contacted me. I, I, I don't know what processes they went through. In the court of public opinion. Well, Can you survive the court of I public just, opinion? It, I'm not commentating on its survival or politics. I'm simply saying to you all that the th I did... It just...
did not happen. Mr. This thing is going to support you. Mr. Prime Minister, and he spoke about the situation with you. Uh, what advice did the Prime Minister give you? Sorry, um, uh, what the question. What did the Prime Minister give you when you first spoke to him about these allegations? Last Wednesday. Well, the, the Prime Minister had received this letter that was circulated and then has been put to the AFP. He explained that he'd received that. I'm not aware that he went into that letter or his office did in any detail. He sent it, as the AFP commissioner had said, to the authority, which was the AFP. Now, we had a discussion about it, and it's obviously a distressing situation, and he, he acknowledged that. But the discussion so wasn't... A, advice as to how to proceed? No, I mean... What exactly was said between you and the Prime Minister when you first spoke about it? What did you tell him, and what did he say to you? Well, he, he said that he had received this material. Or I, I actually... I, I actually... I actually think that that someone had put to him that the material had been sent and his office had looked to see if it had been received. I went to his office at his request and he said that he had received the material, that I was the subject of it and that it had gone to the AFP. So you didn't read the letter that the, that the Prime Minister, you didn't, you didn't read that, that, that detail? No, I, I, as I say, I was aware of a rumour but, Just, to you. I, but, but, but I had, I had, no one has ever put the specifics of an allegation to me from the media. Enforcement, or that's not correct. It's, it's not correct. When were you first aware of a rumour, of any rumour from any person? About November of last year, I think. Minister, we, now know know that the the we now, we now know that the deceased took her own life in Adelaide in 2020, following meetings in which you were the centre of conversation in terms of the meetings is it right that you remain the first law officer of the Commonwealth of Australia while, while a report on this woman's death by the South Australian police is yet to be handed to the South Australian well, coroner? Is that correct? I, Do you retain that position? First of all, I, I don't know anything about the circumstances. I, I just don't. Whether I was a point of discussion or not, I don't know. The status of the South Australian report, which is a, a thing that police do as a preliminary matter for the coroner, I am unaware of. Also on your I, I, I don't know whether there will be a coronial investigation. Hey, Mr. Mr. Potter, are you confident, Mr. Potter, that, are you confident, Mr. Potter, that uh, no other women will come forward with other, uh, other allegations yes. in different jurisdictions? Yes. Sir. Mr. Potter, is there, there was a time that you spent alone with this person? Look, I mean, it's not impossible, but I've never been in the person's room or anything like you that. Had you, you been shirt, drinking? I, I did read that. I did read that um, as part of the material, and I, re I recall it sparked a memory. Um, there were four of us, three three boys, and this person whose name I can't even say because of the situation we're in. Um, I don't think any of us had ever ironed a shirt before, and. I recall she showed us how to do that. I, I remember that. That's, That's a very specific claim that you room. remember, and um, that you don't remember having any other kind of relationship with her. No doubt. But it's because I didn't. But the well, sorry, Mr. Potter, Mr. Potter, Mr. Potter so when she owned your shirt, when she owned your shirt for you, you, she claims that you said uh, that she would make a wonderful wife one day. Look, I mean, I just I don't remember that specifically, but it's not impossible that that was said in a joke. You're going to begin your own. You're going to begin your own. You're going to sue me, Mr. Porter. You're going to begin your own defamation proceedings. Look, over the last week, um, so much has been said of every imaginable type, and some of the stuff online is just, I mean, it's just incredible. I, I will look at it all. Why do you think this woman would come up with such an elaborate lie? It's just people. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what her circumstances were. I don't know. Has she confused you with someone else? I, I just I couldn't answer that question. I mean, I I know about the person, what I've read. I don't know about her life or what challenges she faced or or anything like that. I, I just, I hadn't seen 
or heard or had contact in 33 years. Mr. Potter, what do you know? Sorry? Did you have a girlfriend in person? I think I did, yeah. But like I was, I was seven, 17, I think I turned 17 about six months before that. Like I, was a, I was a boy. As Attorney General, as Attorney General, you sit on the National Security Committee. How can the Australian public be well, can I say this to you, that being compromised or blackmailed is usually about things that you don't want to have publicly, right? Thanks to this situation, everyone knows about this. I'm just saying it didn't happen. So, Mr Porter, what do you know, Mr Porter, about uh, efforts to remove details of your debating trip in 1988 from Wikipedia? I've never heard of such a thing. Was it, was it, was it I, you know, I didn't know, did not know that the debating trips were on Wikipedia. Was it, you have said that the complainant's recollection is obviously and very. Can I just say, like, this, these conspiracy theories that are just everywhere, like, including about the circumstances of this poor girl's death. I mean, it, it is just absolutely wild. Well, it might, it might have been a... It was a Wednesday no, Friday. he said Wednesday. Did I say Wednesday? The Prime Wednesday? Minister said Wednesday. I think, it, I think it was Wednesday because I think it was after a Cabinet meeting. So so you said that you heard rumours about this in November. Can you tell us where you heard those through? What was the I, um, it was a very old friend of mine um, whom I had dinner with um, and she had said to me that a group of people were spreading a rumour that I had some, in some way offended against the person 33 years ago but like no like like rumours are um, it was just in the vaguest terms. Mr Porter would you be paying personally would it be paying personally for your defamation lawyer well, or I just, I, you're, you're assuming a course of action that I just haven't fully contemplated. Mr yet. Porter how does this affect the way that you see your role in public life in the future? I think one of the reasons why I'm just going to take a couple of weeks off and say I'm not ashamed to say I'm going to seek some support and assistance is that if something like this happens to you just like that you never in a million years expect I'm sure it will change my views on a whole range of things. Guys, we're going to, we're going to take one more question. We're going around Mr. Porter, the complainant, last the complainant, Mr. Porter, the complainant's friends, Mr. Porter, says that they remember her as brilliant and someone who thought she would be Australia's Prime Minister. What are your recollections of her? I, I remember her as a bright, happy person, but I don't dispute anything that her friends would say is about how they recollect her. Is your recollection flawed? You have said her recollection is obviously strongly held. Could your recollection be flawed by your own public, by your own public well, perception? I, I will finish by saying that th the things that I have read did not happen. And to suggest that they could be forgotten is ridiculous. They, they just never. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.